so we can run right on through it. Romans the 8th chapter and the 26th through the 31st verse. 1 Corinthians the 2nd chapter and 1 verse number 9. And then the book of Esther. I got to go there this morning. Just for a few moments. Chapter number two. Let's read it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Thank God for my lovely wife. She's a sweetie pie. And I thank God for in the Holy Ghost. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what to pray as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession with us according with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Touch your neighbor and say, God's got a will for your life. And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Whom he called, them he also justified. Whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, touch your neighbor and say, who, 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 who? can be against us. Flip over to that 1 Corinthians 2 and 9, you know it. But as it is written, eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things which God have prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of our God. The book of Esther, quickly if you will. Now it's going to seem like I'm jumping around, but just hit it with me and, and let's move on. Is that all right? Somebody say glory. No, 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 no. Please say it like you've got some anointing in the Holy Ghost. Glory. All right. We're going to start at chapter 2 and verse 7. Go with me now. And he brought up Hadessa that is Esther, his uncle's daughter. For she had neither father nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful, whom Mordecai, whom her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. Let's jump over to that 17, just for the sake of time. And the king loved Esther above all the women. She obtained grace and favor. Touch your neighbor and say, the king loves me. Oh, Got to get in the spirit. I'm not talking about an earthly king either. There's a king that's the king of kings. And the king loved Esther above all the women and she obtained grace and obtain favor 
in the sight more than all of the other virgins so that he set the royal crown upon her head made her queen instead of vestai let's move on quickly oh god verse number 11 of chapter 4 and we're going to read these verses and I promise you we're going to stop all the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces do know that whosoever whether man or woman shall come in the king into the inner court who is not called there is one Lord of his to put him to death except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter that he may live but I have not been called to come unto him these 30 days they said to Mordecai Esther's words and Mordecai commanded the answer Esther saying these words think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews for if thou hold together all together holdeth thy peace at this time then there shall an enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place but thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this then that's the bathe them return Mordecai of this answer go and gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan get in God's face and fast for me go to the throne room and tell them these words I also and my maidens will fast likewise and I will go unto the king which is not according to the law but if I perish, I just have to perish. That, that, that may not seem like enough to be anything this morning, but I want you to do me a favor and just, I need to ask this question before we move on. Is anybody that within the last six months to a year have gone through a major battle, a major attack of the enemy. You name it, it has happened. He's attacked your physical man. He's attacked your spiritual life, your finances, your marriage, your, your anointing. He's tried to, you name it, it's tried to happen in these last. I say to you, if you have not gone through it, then I ask you to excuse yourself for this session because you won't be the people that God would speak to this morning. Because the people that God would speak to this morning have been through the storms and the rain and have had heartaches and pain and have been through trials and been in the trench. They've been fighting with everything they know, holding on with everything they've got. And for some reason, God wouldn't allow them to give up in the process they're here now tonight I'm going to ask you to do this if you will look at your neighbor and say to them these words I finally figured out what your whole problem is tell them your problem is this you are in your pathetic destiny touch the person on the other side of you and say I finally figured out why you're going through so much you are in your pathetic destiny uh, now now this time you've got to get somebody 
way across the room and get them in eyes view in the spirit look at somebody that look like they've gone through everything just to be where they are right now grab back and say hey I know what your whole problem is you are in your prophetic destiny now I, I, I promise I'm not gonna be real long but listen to me it's easy to tell somebody else what they're in and what they're going through and how they're going through it but every now and then you got to lay hands on yourself speak to your own self can't find nobody to prophesy can't find nobody to lay hands on me can't even find a preacher that'll preach Jesus lay hands on yourself and say I know what my whole problem is say to yourself girl your problem is you are in your pathetic destiny take your seats in the Holy Ghost for just a few moments I, I am convinced that this is a time that God Almighty is moving like he's never moved before. It's a time that God is now ushering the people of God into a place where by which we have never found ourselves participating and matriculating like never before in the history of mankind. This now is the day that God is simply moving and having his way in the lives of those of you that least expect. He's allowing individuals who seemingly have come from the ruins of life and have come from the past and experiences and have found themselves declaring regardless of what I've been through regardless of what I'm going through even now I recognize in whom I believe that I am persuaded that this God that I serve has not left me here to die in the wilderness thereof but rather the experiences and encounters that I've gone through have caused me to come to a place where by which I know him for myself I am so thankful to God in this last hour that this is the time that I recognize that it was good for me to have been afflicted because now that I've gone through my afflictions I know God like I've never known him before if I had never gone through that experience I would not have had the encounter in the Holy Ghost I would not be where I am in the things and the places in God like I am and so as a result now this is the day that God has brought people full circle he's called them to understand that those that are high he's bringing down those that are low he's bringing forth the promotion comes not from the north south east or the west but it now comes from the auspices of God originating strategies thereby this now is the hour that God has particularly matriculated and brought the people of God to a place where by which they will understand that the people that know their God shall be strong the Bible says and be found not doing the exploits of the spirit this now this now this now is the hour whereby which God now is bringing the people of God full circle touch your name and say I've been through so much but I'm grateful to God for every experience now because this experience has caused me to be defiant to the plan of the enemy it's to cause me to know the devil's tricks to know the devil's plans I am not ignorant according to the devices of day Satan I recognize that the devil's plan now is to stop and try to block me from moving into the place where I've got to go in him and the devil is a liar as a result now in the midst of we must be cautious because in this last hour the enemy now is doing something like he
he's never done before please take your seat he's allowing individuals to sit in the corridors of the house of God and go through the religious experiences thereof and miss out in God sit up in church and just know how to have church just know how to sing just know how to play the organ just know how to preach and articulate oh but I'm concerned at this last hour because God said the kind of people that I'm raising up in this last hour will not be able to tolerate just anything they're gonna recognize I need some power I can smell the anointing I can feel the presence of God I want him like I've never wanted him before this now is the last hour this now is the last day and the last crime thereof. I understand now in the realm of the spirit what's taking place like never before. He declared unto me, Nathan Simmons, did not I declare unto you in the last days perilous times shall come? Did not I tell you that men now shall be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God? Did not I declare unto you that if I did shorten the days, the very elect would sit up in church, shout dance, speak in tongues, give them money, pay their tithes and be on the deacon's board, the deaconess board, be evangelist missionaries, pastors and preachers, and fool around and miss me in the process. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm sorry, I cannot miss God now. So as a result now, what has happened is God now has given those of us to have a low tolerance level for the things that are not like God. I don't want to fool around with nobody that just has a gift, that just has a talent, because gifts and talents come without repentance. I want to know, is somebody living what they sing? Are you living what you preach? If you get through doing what you're doing here, or can I follow you home? It's the hour believer that God now is raising up a generation of individuals so that when we think about ministry, it will no longer be Hollywood. It will no longer be about starism now. Who's who and what's what in God? God said, I'm going to use nothings. I'm going to use nobodies. I'm going to use folks that you ain't never heard of. But when they get up, they're going to walk in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Touch your neighbor and say, that boy is talking about me. Because there's some stuff I've been through. That when I get through going through what I'm going through, or oh, I may not be where I should be right now. I may not be doing everything I should be right now. But when I get that boyfriend up of mine, when I get that lover up, I can hear nobody. That's when God's going to deliver me and cause me to mount up in the victory. Touch your neighbor and say, don't put me out the church. Be patient with me. God is working on me. He took me on a trip to the potter's house. He said to me, Nathan Simmons, I know the whole He said, this now is the hour that God is raising up a generation of individuals who in the nest thereof will not just move with the talents of mankind. It will not just be business as usual. He said, Nathan Simmons, I don't just want to hear singers that can sing, but when they finish singing, they have bad attitudes. You can't even talk to them. You can't even shake their hand. said this has got to be the hour that when musicians play they don't just tickle on the eye record just because they know how to make you shout and get excited he said but Nathan Simmons when is the last time you heard a musician play and when they got through playing the organ they drove demons out as a matter of fact we don't even deal with demons now as soon as somebody act up we take the security force and escort them out but they used to cast out devils they used to lay hands Hands on the sick. I can't hear the bus shut out of my hundo. Said Nathan Simmons, this is the hour that preachers have come forth, and we're not demising anyone's ministry. But this now is the day that we've got to stop of philosophizing in the pulpit. Oh, this is not a psychiatric. 
Patrick Ward. I can't hear nobody. This ain't just about prosperity, honey. But what should it profit a man to gain the whole world and fool around and bust hell wide open? Said Nathan Simmons, this now must not be the time. He said, it's never before, and I don't know about in your area, but we've got more people that are called in ministry than ever in the history of mankind. Everybody's a missionary. Everybody's an evangelist. Everybody's a prophet. Everybody is a pastor. Everybody is a bishop. Oh, I can't hear nobody. He said, but this must not be the day. He said, Nathan Simmons, I want you to understand. You cannot take a piece of paper uh, to the hospital with somebody that's got cancer and tell them, uh, 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 be healed because uh, my bishop uh, licensed me and ordained me in the convocation, in the meeting thereof. No. He said, Nathan Simmons, that piece of paper ain't going to heal. He said, what you need is some power with God. And I made up in my mind, you have the title you have the position but just give me the power I want power to walk right I want power to live right I want power to give right I want power to do right I want power 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 run over the three people and say I want power Take your seat for just a few moments. He said to me, Nathan Simmons. And I apologize for seeming so radical. But I'm tired of the devil. Touch your neighbor and say, the devil makes me sick. I'm going to mess up in just a few moments, but he said to me, Nathan Simmons, you know what the problem is now? I said, what God? Please speak to me. He said, Nathan, the problem with this time is that babies are raising babies. Spiritual pygmies are raising spiritual retards and people that have no standard in God are trying to usher people in the presence of God he said to me Nathan Simmons he said and I know this is going to seem old fashioned and old timey he said but the problem now Nathan is that there are no mothers and fathers in God that will correct individuals and tell them you mean well, you meant well, but that's not the way God meant for you to do it. You cannot have your cake and eat it too. said to me Nathan Simmons oh God help me he said we need mothers and fathers in God touch your neighbor and say we need some mothers and fathers that will nurture and build up this last chosen generation ask somebody where are they I'm not speaking necessarily about chronologically or age. I'm talking about somebody that's got some experience and that has a hope in God that's been through something because you can't tell me that God's a deliverer if you ain't never been delivered. You can't tell me that God's a healer if you ain't never been healed. You can't tell me that God's a way maker if he ain't never made your way. Oh, I'm about to mess up. 
Oh God, I'm about to miss it. He said to me, Nathan Simmons, God help me. He said, we need some mothers in God that will teach young women boys dignity class grace and how to be a lady he said to me Nathan Simmons this last generation needs a mother in God to sit them down I can hear nobody and tell them that oh God I'm about to mess up the ladies don't sit like this they sit like this I know y'all don't oh, oh I'm sorry I'm, I'm, I'm sorry we need some mothers in God Young women. Safety walking on alone. Be loud. That if she wants a husband, y'all ain't saying it to me. She ain't got to get all up in the man's face, take him out to dinner, pay his rent, buy him a car, buy him a suit, get him out. If she wants a husband, she got to hide. And stop thinking that every man that compliments you wants your body. I can't hear nobody. <laughs> we need some mothers in Zion. Or oh, I'm going to mess up right about now. I will teach your women that class and dignity says that you don't come in bald headed one week and the next week look like Farrah Fawcett. Or oh, I'm sorry. That even though it's your hair and it's your weave and it's your glue the class makes me think that you grew that bad boy I can't hear nobody not just paid for it oh I'm about to mess up real bad now somebody look at me and say preach boy preach we we need some mothers in God I'm about to teach oh God I'm about to mess up that will teach young women that just because clothes look good on a mannequin look good in a magazine don't mean you can put on everything and still I'm, 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 I'm sorry I'm just a little sanctified preacher I'm sorry, I, my heritage among those that are sanctified. We need some mothers in Zion that will teach young women that you can't put that 22 and a 14 and still look good. Now you know I'm right. get to the word in a minute I promise you I'm really gonna mess up now we need some mothers in God that will teach young women sweetheart you're too blessed to be stressed you rich 
God had added no sorrow. But baby, you too blessed to wear a halter. And then come to church, jump it up. Oh, y'all don't like what I'm saying up in here. They want to get mad when somebody want to touch you and feel you. I can't hear them. Oh, I'm about to mess up. Oh, I'm going to mess up real bad. Somebody please say, preach, Nathan, preach, preach. We need some mothers in God that will tell young women, sweetheart, thank God for this new undergarment. Thank God for the victorious secrets. But the Lord has blessed you. And the more you have, touch somebody and tell them. We need some mothers that'll teach young women. You need to put on a foundation. You're too blessed to wear bikinis. I can't hear nobody. So you're gonna weep and then the wobbling and the weeping and the wobbling and the weeping and I'm gonna mess up. I'm gonna mess up. 
I'm going to mess up. We need some fathers in God that will teach young men that if you don't use this head, this head is going to get you in trouble. I'm going to mess up. And so God said to me, Nathan Simmons, I want you to minister. Please take your seat for just a few moments, my precious sisters. He said to me, Nathan Simmons, this now must be the time that we literally find ourselves matriculating and participating in something called the paradigm shift. He said, this now must be the hour that God's people matriculate and grow in God to levels whereby which we have never obtained and gone before. This now must be the time that God instructs and gives unto the people of God the lessons of life that must be taught and learned thereof so that we can get the full significance of the value of everything that God now has decayed upon our lives to bear. He said this now must be the hour that the people of God understand. I've got to go through some tests. I've got to go through something but it's not what I go through but rather how I go through it. He said, Nathan, oh Nathan, this now must be the time that the real people of God come to a place where they recognize that when I pass this test, I cannot go through with a 65 or 70, an 80 or 90, a 95 or a 99, but this must be the time that 99 and a half simply won't do. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm striving to make 100. Now in the process thereof, there must be lessons that we must learn that will cause us to matriculate in God and find succession in the thought patterns of God's purpose. He said, Nathan Simmons, please tell my dear sisters. He said, tell my dear saints of God, this now must be the time that we've got to learn the lessons that God has so instituted in our lives and learn them well. Get everything out of them that's of necessity so we can grow into the places with God beating and reaching the full heights of God's determination he said Nathan Simmons tell my people this tell them that this must be the hour that you've got to learn the lesson that when you look at an individual and tell you can shake their hand and look at somebody that you know don't really like you and say I know you don't like me but shake their hand and say but I love the hell out of you he said Nathan Simmons this must be the time that the lessons of God must be learned we now must understand the doing of God in order for us to say that we've learned the lessons of God we're going to literally be have to be able to shake hands with the individual and say to the person that you know lied on you uh, listen girl thank you for the lie because it was that lie that drove me to a place in God where I would have never gone had you lied on He said, Nathan Simmons, he said, tell my dear people and tell you can look at the person and shake their hand that has caused you to come to a point of rejection. Why wow, y'all ain't jumping up now? And look at the person whether it was through relationship, whether it was through friendship, whether he got a middle-aged crisis and said he didn't want to be bothered with you no more, I can't hear nobody, and he rejected you until you can look at the individual and shake their hand and say thank you for your rejection because your rejection drove me to my knees. I would have never got my prayer life. I would have never got in God's face. I would have never been able to look to the hills from which coming my help and know that my help coming from the Lord. 
do me a favor and just use the person proxy and shake the hand and say, I, I know you didn't do anything to me, but I'm practicing on you so when I get home, I'ma call that old girlfriend of mine. I'ma call my ex. I'ma tell them thank you. Cause now I know that I'm the head and not the tail. I'm the first and not the last. That I'm above only and never beneath. That I can do all of things. Do me a favor and say no bitterness. No hatred, no unforgiveness, am I harboring in my heart? Because if I harbor unforgiveness and iniquity in my heart, God ain't going to hear me. said to me Nathan Simmons he said in order to go where God is trying to take us he said there are some individuals that found themselves at places in God where they recognize listen I am so close to what God is about to do within me until I recognize there's got to be a reason why I'm going through what I'm going through and the reason why I'm going through this thing is because I'm that close. Anybody here that close? God said when you're that close, you got to be careful because you're at a position that is very vulnerable in God. And that position comes in this stance. He said it's at that point that when God is about to do what he wants to do inside of you, that's when you got to pray closer. You got to lean closer to God than you've ever been in your entire life. You got to forget about the hurt, the pain. You got to forget about the trial, the suffering. You got to forget about the persecution. He said you got to draw now to God because it's at that time that you are literally betwixt and between the prophecy and the promise. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm between prophecy and promise. But touch your neighbor and say, I can't go back to the prophecy. Because God already said what he said. All I can do is go into my promise now. Ready or not, here I come. And the promises of God are yea. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. Touch about people and say, if God said it all to you, it's going to come to pass. Said so Nathan. He said, you got to be very careful when the hand of God is on your life. You got to be careful who you hang out with. You got to be careful who you associate with because association brings on assimilation. How can two walk together except they agree? Come out from among them and be separated, saith the Lord. So he said, Nathan, it's the devil's plan to strategically assign demonic forces to prohibit you from going into your fulfillment of prophetic destiny. I said, God, what are you saying to me? He said, Nathan Simmons, and this is what I'm going to say to you. If you were the devil, what would you do to stop you from going where God had to take you? Who would you use to stop you from tapping into the realm 
of the spirit where the devil don't want you to go. He said, Nathan Simmons, he said, what I want you to understand is this. He said, there are levels in God. Touch your neighbor and say, there are levels in God. Oh, oh, will you say it like you really know it? Say, there are levels in God. Now, if you know anything about the levels of God, every level you go to, there's another situation, there's another circumstance, there's another problem, there's another area that the devil is messing with you with, there's your past that he's trying to bring up. He said for every level that you go to, confess to your neighbor for every level there is a devil God help me so that's why in the process of God God I, I wish I God help me he said that's why when you obtain certain things it's best for me God said to deliver you while you're in a low state of being so that when you get here the devil don't make a f fool out of you now they don't teach this now because uh it's just not popular but they taught that there's some things that you gotta get rid of in the infancy of your salvation or you will struggle with these things throughout your entire walk with God you'll be saved but you'll speak in tongues but you'll be anointed but you'll have a ministry but and it's those things and if you don't get together called the but or oh, I can't hear nobody it's those butts that will take your butt to hell. Oh God. He said, oh God, can I please say this? I'm going to get to Esther. You know I'm going to go to Esther in just a few seconds, I promise you. He said, Nathan, tell my people if you don't get delivered when you first get saved from arrogance you will be saved you'll speak in tongues but you will be a arrogant know-it-all saint that can't nobody tell nothing he said Nathan Simmons tell my dear sisters if you don't get delivered in the infancy of being mean and knowing how to talk to people he said how dare you know how to speak in tongues and don't even know how to speak to me your Holy Ghost should have told you you hurt my feelings it's not what you say it's how you say it oh I wish I had another message I'm getting ready to really mess up right now he said Nathan I want you to tell my dear precious saints you don't get delivered in the infancy of your salvation from oh my God fornication oh oh God he said you will struggle with that spirit because that's exactly what it is no matter how he tells you that he loves you I can hear nobody 
no matter how he tells you, baby, 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 baby. You'll never find. I found love on a two-way street and lost it on a lonely highway. I don't care how he says, I guess you'd say what can make me feel this way. My girl, my girl, my girl, I'm talking about. That ought to showed you right there. He said, my girl, my girl, and my girl. It's about three of y'all. He telling you the same thing he telling that other girl. And you so crazy. You so hard up. You just want a man.
a quiet secret in the church that's known but we won't deal with it and address it he said we act like it's not there but we know it he said Nathan Simmons teach the young women don't marry a man that's a sissy Don't you let no closet case sissy mess your life up. And because homosexuality is a spirit, you can't judge it because it has muscles. Because it's a whole lot of men that got muscles that look like Hercules look like Tarzan but they sound like Jane and they act just like Cheetah I thought I thought booty cat uh, 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 uh. he said Nathan Simmons Tell the women of God, don't be that hard up. Wait on God. If you marry a girl, you're going to be sorry. Because homosexuality is a spirit. Now let me say this. Sister, sister, lesbianism is a sin Oh, I'm a mess up. I'm a mess up. An alternative lifestyle is wrong. Don't you let these old sissy sisters fool you because they wear a dress. I can't hear nobody. Oh, I'm a mess up. You know it's dykes. Oh my God, oh my God. Touch that girl next to you and tell them, I want to tell you one thing. I have passed from life to death. Cause I know I love the brother, but I can't hear them. Show me a man. A real man. A bass talking man. A baby, I love you, man. A pull me in your arms, man. A take me out to dinner, man. A help me pay the rent, man. A have a house before I get married, man. What a J-O-B man! God said to me in prayer, He said, Nathan Simmons, he said, I want you to tell the women of God, and I'm wrapping up now. He said, Nathan, I want you to tell them that there is a place that I've definitely surrounded them with. Now, in order for us to understand exactly what it is, please take your seat that the Spirit of God is sharing with us this morning. In order for us to grasp the full meaning of what it is that the Holy Ghost wants to share, we've got to now leave this place. We've got to now sojourn in the spirit beyond this atmosphere, beyond another hemisphere thereof. We've got to go beyond Saturn and Mars and Jupiter, if you will. We've got to go beyond the stars and the moon into the place beyond the 12 gates of the city whose streets thereof are paved with gold. We've got to now matriculate and walk down the places whereby we're 
church we see our father's house have many mansions there we're going now into the holies of holies sitting down by the feet of the messiah in the heavens thereof in the inner chamber of the sanctuary of the most high god here we are now people of god in an hour where the story comes into being at the year 510 years before the birth of our lord and savior jesus christ it's a marvelous time in god but god now is matriculated and brought forth in predestine the perfect will thereof of his accomplishments long before the doing thereof he now has caused destiny to come thy into mist by a prophetic utterance thereof of god god now deals with the dear precious sister and you know the story you can preach it for yourself this story deals with a dear precious sister that when you look at her life she now comes forth proceeding in time she's likened under many that have found themselves hurt and wounded rejected and scarred beat up and wondered thereof but God now gives her to understand that every one of her experiences have been for the making thereof look at your neighbor and say everything you've been through God use it to make you and establish you to get you to this place that's why you gotta be careful who you deal with because you don't want to fool around with nobody that wants to make you compromise in God tell somebody you are not there you don't know what I went through you don't know how I went through it to get to this place in God I know some have gone through similarities but tell somebody there is a price that had to be paid and I paid the price they don't teach it no more but they told me if I suffer with him I'm going to reign with him and I Lord I feel like preaching y'all y'all in my tippy toes I heard him declare these words now he said Nathan she's alright baby leave her alone she's right on the right place on the altar I wish somebody would pray this an altar worker and come on up and get her deliverance in God I I heard him declare these words I heard him say listen Nate he said when you look at this dear woman understand that she had some major issues she had a reason to give up and die and never be everything that God made her she had a reason to declare that she was not going to be ushered into the purpose and plan of God for her life but I heard him I, I, I heard that she was born by the name of Hadessa. All right, look at somebody say she was Hadessa. Now the name Hadessa simply means this. She who has been thrown away. She who has been cast aside. Is there anybody in the room this morning that's ever been thrown away? Left for dead. But the devil meant it for evil. But God turned the thing around and worked it out for your good. Tell your, tell your name. Tell me everything that I went through. It was God's purpose. It was God's plan. And now that I went through it, look at me now. God to turn my name from Hadessa into Esther. And the name Esther means star. Touch your neighbor and tell them these words. Every scar that I went through, every hurt, every infliction, I endured. I understood that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, I said the Lord, I said the Lord, I said the Lord will deliver them out of them all. Tell your neighbor, I don't know how God going to bring you out. I don't know when God going to do it, but he is. If I know God like I know him, he's going to push me. If I know like I know him, he's gonna pull me. If I know God, like I know him, he's gonna shut me. If I know God, like I know him, he's gonna drag me out of that mess. And when I come out, and when, 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 when I come out, and when I come out, that's the organ. And when I come out, you're gonna know that I've been delivered. You're gonna know. But I've been set free. But now when I get there, I can't get comfortable. When I get there, I can't act like I've arrived. When I get there, I can't be cute. When I get there, I can't act like I don't know nobody. When I get there, I can't burn no bridges. Touch your neighbor and say, don't burn.
you have to cross back uh, through the same bridges uh, over again. Uh, don't cut nobody out. Uh, don't put thumbs down on nobody. Uh, Cause you don't know who uh, is going to be the one uh, that God will have to use uh, to help get you out your mess. Uh, get you out your problem. Uh, get you out your situation. Uh, and I Somebody ran back and said, preach it, they preach it, they preach it. I heard him declare, when you get me to this point, when you get me to this place, don't get comfortable. God allowed her, I said, God allowed her to go through a trial, to go through a test, to go through the situations. But he'll always have somebody that'll be a witness, that'll be a prophet of God. Tell your neighbor, I need a prophet. Talking about Cleo, I can't hear nobody. I said, I'm not talking about Cleo, I'm not talking about the psychic 900. I'm talking about a real man of God that'll tell me what the Lord says, that'll tell me when I'm right and correct me when I'm wrong. And I I said, wait a minute, Lord. He said, Nathan Simmons, when she got to their place, she was Mordecai. Mordecai was not necessarily just any old body. Mordecai was the father of her brother, which means that her father had died and her mother had died, left her an orphan. Tell your neighbor she was an orphan. But guess what? God knows how. When my mother and my father forsake me to take me up, that's why Jesus said, Who is my mother? Who is my father? In God, my father is rich in houses and land. He holds the wealth of the world in the power of his hand. Now listen to this, y'all. The Bible declares that when Hadessa found herself at a place the oven God, Mordecai was not her uncle. He was not her spiritual father. He was not her brother. He was her second or third cousin. Y'all ain't saying that to me. And you know how them second and third cousins do, yeah? Sometimes you don't really know them. I can't hear nobody. They're in the family, but you only see them in funerals. You only see them in family unions. They only call you in the knees some money I can't hear no now the Bible declares that her cousin I said her cousin began to raise her and nurture her in the ways of God in the things of the spirit now this is the thing that's shared with me in the New Testament do you remember those two ladies that were cousins in the Holy Ghost they were cousins naturally but God did something on the inside the Bible speaks about how Elizabeth the cousin of Mary was pregnant with John the Baptist and when Mary can see the prophecy that she was going to be with child the Bible says she greeted her with salutation and the baby leaped leaped in her belly what you trying to say I know you got cousins I know you got family members but I come to tell you that who your real kid is who your real cousin is in the spirit is when God pregnates you with a prophecy concerning your destiny it's at that time when God says it and you tell him about it something leaps on the inside something reckless on the inside we touch and agree and believe God and I I heard him declare I said I heard him declare when the thing took place that Hadessa got turned into Esther the Bible declares that after all she went through she didn't look like much she went through sadness she went through pain she went through heartaches she went through rain she had some tumbles I can't hear nobody she went through stuff I said she went through stuff that nobody else wanted to go through come here precious when she went through it when she went through it I said when she went through it it 
was sad when she went through it she went sad too but let me tell you something when you go through it you gotta be careful she's all right when she now now now, now, now i'm trying to just use your ellis in the station i i know you sweetheart with the hat on yes come 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 now listen to this listen to this help her now listen to this many times if you get delivered from your scars if you get delivered from the hurt and the pain and the infliction and go through your hardness like a good soldier Touch your neighbor and say, don't complain about nothing. Don't get upset about nothing. Thank God for everything. Because it's working out for my good. Now listen to this. Her name was Hadessa. That was what's on the outside. But inside of her, there had to be developed a name by the name of Esther. Now when you see this woman on the outside, you're looking at Hadessa. Touch your neighbor and say, that look like Hadessa to me. But it takes somebody that can look beyond my faults. Look beyond my mistakes. To not see me in the flesh. Tell your neighbor, I need you to see me in the spirit. On the outside, I look like Hadessa. But there's a queen inside. On the outside, there's a lonely, frustrated, hard up woman but on the inside there's a queen that God is turning around from being Hadessa to be Queen Esther Wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord, stay right there and wait on the Lord while you're waiting. 
suffer persecution, but if I suffer, if I suffer, if I suffer, if I suffer, I'll reign. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, I made up my mind. I made up my mind. I got to go through some things. I got to go through trouble. But the Bible declares, man, man, that is born of a woman is of a few days. And those days will be full of trouble. But tell your neighbor, I'm glad. I said, tell your neighbor, and I'm going to stop right now. Tell your neighbor, tell them these words. Tell them, have you ever found out? Have you ever heard about it? Weeping. I said, weeping. I said, weeping. Weeping, 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 weeping,